Hello Whiskey Daydreamers, this is Mark from Whiskey Whistle bringing you whiskey review number 54. We are in Japan. Well, figuratively speaking anyway. We're in Japan for the second in a series of my Japanese whiskey reviews. This one is Hibiki, the 17 year old. And apparently this is just a kick-ass blended Japanese whiskey. So let's see if that's true. 17 years old. It is 43% ABV, and uh, well, I have no idea what this tastes like. This is the first time I found a, a miniature here in Korea where I live uh, at Namdaemun Market. So if you're interested, you can find a miniature there. It is readily available on specialty shelves here in, in Korea. Okay, so uh, let's get that open. This comes to you from... Uh, the Suntory Whiskey Company, uh, Suntory, uh, who are the parent company uh, of Beam Suntory and uh, are owners of uh, distilleries in uh, USA, in Scotland, in Canada? I'm not sure. But anyway, so what an elegant little bottle. Let's have a look at that one. And it's got some serious weight to it as well. Um, uh, this is, uh, boy, definitely more than half a pound and a uh, really, really cool lid as well. Let's see if you can have a look at that one. Uh, so this is something that certainly does not need a, 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 a crystal decanter because it comes with its own very cool, uh, receptacle. Okay, so let's get that poured, shall we? Hibiki 17 year old. I'm really, really excited about this one too. There we go. Roughly 30 milliliters, I'd say. This one is something that a very good friend of mine named Rory Wright in Winnipeg, uh, he suggested to me that I try this. And it's interesting because he was a real stalwart uh, and sticking to single malts. He refused to, to try blended Scotch whiskey. But this one won his heart over and I want to know why. So let's find out, shall we? Uh, we're gonna have a little chat about uh, Hibiki. And um, before that, there will be a short, very short advertisement right here. Don't forget, if you are not interested in watching advertisements, you can just choose to skip the ad, okay? So, uh, Hibiki 17-year-old blended Japanese whiskey. It's 43% ABV. Um, like most blended whiskeys, probably a little bit of chill filtration has gone on uh, to a, a lesser degree or who knows exactly. Possibly some color added, hopefully not. Um, uh, now, for Japanese whiskeys, it's kind of interesting. The companies, the rival companies, tend not to share their whiskeys, unlike uh, Scotch whiskeys do, Scotch distilleries do. So, if um, if Company X in Scotland wants to make a blended Scotch whiskey, they may ask Company Y. They may buy some of Company Y's uh, special whiskey to put in the blend. Uh, in Japan, apparently this is not the case, so um, there's perhaps a, well, a truncation of flavors that goes on, uh, although what they've done instead is uh, a distillery like Yamazaki or Hakushu, which are two of the uh, constituent malts that go into Hibiki, may make a variety of whiskey styles in that distillery by peating or not peating, uh, by including more of, um, um, well, uh, changing the cut, uh, putting more of the, the, what is that called, the four shots, uh, and possibly more of the, uh, the feints, uh, the end of the run, uh, which contain more or less, uh, well, more uh, congeners and other heavier uh, flavored uh, um compounds that come through the still okay so they can modify 
the drying process of the, the malt and they can also modify uh, how the whiskey is distilled to achieve a different flavor that they can then age and then blend together and achieve that balance that blended whiskey is looking for. Okay, and uh, from what I, I have done in my, what I've done, from what I have found in my research, um, this has been part matured in Umeshu casks. Umeshu is the green plum that I talked about uh, in the Yamazaki 12 year old review, which was uh, number 53. Uh, okay, so part matured in Umeshu casks. Now with Yamazaki, I mentioned that was a flavor that I tasted. Uh, in other words, it seemed like, okay, not contained. Uh, this one, however, um, the whiskey is part matured, possibly finished, or perhaps some casks are fully matured in uh, casks that previously contained uh, umeshu wine, so a green plum wine, okay? And, uh, well, hibiki, by the way, um, means resonance or echo. So I'm hoping that means that uh, uh, I will feel an echo of flavors uh, going again and again and again throughout the finish. So let's find out. And uh, uh, Hibiki uh, from the Suntory website says that it's a blend of innumerable malt and grain whiskies. Okay. All right. So let's try that, shall we? Uh, before we experience the smells together, there will be another short advertisement right here. Welcome back. Let's check out the nose together, shall we? It is very, very malty. I really only detect a very, very slight uh, amount of green whiskey in there. And I'm really glad I tried the Yamazaki uh, in the previous review because I can smell a little bit of Yamazaki in here as well. This one has a little bit more vanilla. And there's still quite a lot of spice, cinnamon, bit of nutmeg in there. Yes, the grain is very, very subtle. And the grain whiskey properly aged, now grain whiskey is not to say that grain whiskey is inferior to malt whiskey. You do get a higher yield of ABV so in that sense, it is more cost effective than, than a pot stilled whiskey. Green whiskey tends to be uh, stilled in a column still, distilled in a column still, and may achieve um, ABV into the 90s. But you know what, the higher, the higher the ABV in the still, the less flavor you get. So uh, there a, comes a point of no return there. So probably even though column stills are used, they're probably keeping it to uh, not much higher than the pot still uh, would be. Hmm. And there's a floral note in here as well. Kind of like a wildflower. In other words, a flower whose name I don't know. Hmm. Anyway, that green whiskey may actually lend itself to adding some vanilla flavors. And don't forget the green whiskey, even though uh, that is uh, made in a column still. It still has to be aged 17 years uh, in order to be put into a, a bottle with a label on it that says it's 17 years old. Okay? Hmm. 
And there's a lot of oak, uh, oak going on in here as well. I don't really notice any fruit flavors happening here. Maybe a touch of green grape. So really vanilla heavy. Vanilla and spice. Okay. Well, let's taste that, shall we? Cheers, everyone. And cheers again to, oh dear, uh, Shinji... Fukuyo, Shinji Fukuyo, who created this uh, Hibiki blend. Hmm. Well, Rory, if you're watching, I can see why you like this. Goodness sakes. This might be the best blended whiskey I've ever tasted. Oh. Hmm. Well, <clears throat> it starts out sweet, and you still have a lot of nice balance of sour and uh, dry, bitter notes. The sweetness, what is it like? It's like fruit sugar. Hmm. Um, <clears throat> I mentioned that this was aged in... Uh, plum wine casks, which is uh, very interesting and also is something that is also very, um, well, what can I say, lends a real Asian, uh, um, Asian essence to it, a Japanese essence to it, because plum wine is something that is um, inescapable if you live in, in Asia, in Korea as well. Whew. And yet again, some leather coming through here in the nose. I'm 17 years old. I would expect that to be the case. Um, all right. Okay, let's try that again. Big vanilla, and yet also a real juicy green plum note in there. Uh, uh, I can't, it's inescapable. It's not overpowering, but it's there, and it really, really makes this very, very drinkable, very mouth-watering, uh, very delectable. Okay. The dryness is also quite, well, it's quite dry. <laughs> um, so imagine um, a puckeringly dry white wine. And, um, well, the plums we get in, in Canada or USA, um, you know, they're very sweet. But if you were to get an unripe one, um, you get that sourness. So that's what you're getting here, some plum sourness, strong vanillas.
and a bit of um, a bit of olives, in fact. Interesting. Olives, by the way, I mean, technically are a fruit, aren't they? Um, the finish, again, very dry. My mouth feels uh, quite dry right now. The vanilla, the vanilla really extends the fruit flavors as well. And that, um, not salty olive, but... Um, uh, Kind of a fresh olive, perhaps the black olives in, in the can in the brine, you know what I mean? So the brined uh, black olives in the can, wash them off, uh, try those. That's what I'm getting here a little bit in the finish. Which may sound odd, but no, it's totally, totally nice. Hmm. That's right, we have to add a bit of water, don't we? Let's add a little more. What is this flavor? I don't even know. It's a little savory, a little bit sweet. Um, I'm going to call it Yes, I'm going to call that Korean seaweed um, bar snacks. Oh my goodness, i got to go. <laughs> okay, we have to wrap this up. Let's try that with water. Much more vanilla. The fruit is still lovely there. Goodness sakes. This might be one of the best whiskeys I've ever had. Okay, so Hibiki 17-year-old blended Japanese whiskey. The whiskey whistle score is going to be 91 out of 100. Thank you very much to Shinji Fukio for that one. And stay tuned. We will continue with the Japanese whiskeys here on Whiskey Whistle. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. Click it down in the right-hand corner. And we will see you again next time. Cheers, everybody.